Oh, so good evening. Thank you so much for coming. It's really nice to see everybody in person, to, to have you here. Um, it's nice to, and it, it, it's a great opportunity uh, this evening to, to hear about our AP uh, programs, uh, the classes. It's a, good, it's a good opportunity to check in with the teachers. To, they can answer questions that you have. We're really happy uh, to offer the, the, the number of classes that we currently do. Um, I know that I've shared some information with you already. Uh, and just so, just so we're clear too, so there have been a couple changes to what we, uh, to what we've, to what we are currently offering. So just so we're clear, we uh, we are currently we've just recently added uh, AP World, uh, and we've actually we've uh, we've replaced uh, AP Euro. So that's a new that's a new change. So I just want to make sure that, that that's not necessarily reflected in the brochure, but I want to make sure that you're aware of that. So. Uh, one of the things, too, that we're proud to offer, and we've been doing it for a few years now, is our AP Capstone program, um, which involves a couple different classes. And our, one of our AP teachers, uh, Ms. Allison Walters, is going to speak to you about that. So without further ado, welcome. Uh, it's nice to see you. And Allison, take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, bear with me trying to get this isn't like my setup in my classroom. So, <laughs> so um, Seven, seven, almost seven years ago, um, Frontier made the decision to start researching about doing the AP Capstone program, which was a new program that was a skill-based and research program that the College Board offered. And we are in our, this is fourth year? This is the fourth year that we've done AP seminar. Next year will be the fifth year, and the AP research is the second, the second course in a two-course program. AP Seminar is a class that's available to uh, sophomores and juniors, and AP Research can be done as a junior or senior. And it's AP Seminar is a skill-based class, learning different types of skills that are needed in colleges. It was developed working with colleges and universities, and it involves learning how to ask questions, develop um, research skills, develop writing skills, develop speaking skills and team building skills as well. Once a student completes AP seminar, they can move on to AP research. It's not required, but they can move on to AP research and then they will do individual unique research that is looking for and looking at a question that um, is, is sort of a gap in research in any field. It doesn't matter what field of study it is, and the students work on it from the beginning of the year all the way through to the end, do a major research paper and a presentation. Um, AP Seminar, students do two performance tasks for the College Board. One is a team presentation and an individual research report and then an individual argument essay and an individual presentation and then have an exam. And it's working for um, students to, to get ready for the type of work that they will be doing in universities once they leave high school. It's a lot of self-driven work, like it's not content-based, so students do have some flexibility about the type of projects that they end up looking at. We're the only public school in Franklin County that actually offers the capstone program. And there are only eight public schools in Western Massachusetts that offer it. Um, there are many more in other parts of the country, and there are more programs out towards the eastern part of the state. But we're one of the only ones um, in this area that offers the program. So students develop the critical skills that they need, and it's not just for going on to college, but it's also for um, future careers. But it's the type of program in these two years where a student can get an AP Capstone certificate, but they can also work towards, if they, if they have the ambition, to take four other AP classes and get an AP Capstone high school diploma, which is similar to the International Baccalaureate. It's, it's like an honors level high school diploma. And, and these are the two. So for seminar, you do a team project and presentation, an individual research essay, and an end of course exam. And in research, the second year, you do an academic paper, and then you do a presentation and an oral defense. And this two year program works together for our capstone. 
AP seminar for the first part of the course, as I'm teaching the skills, we look at a theme and the theme that I chose to do at Frontier was looking at the theme of human rights. And students get to pick different topics within that to do their, their mock performance tasks at the beginning for the first semester and then they move on and then they've got choices in their groups and then individually of what they want to do their other um, research on. And then there's an end of course exam which is, which is two parts. One is analyzing an argument and the other is creating an argument essay which is a measurement of just how they're able to apply the skills that they learn through the year. This is just a slide showing what AP research is and it really is, it's the research, the writing and the presentation of a college level research paper. There's the academic paper and the presentation. There's no exam or anything when you do AP research and across the country and actually around the world because AP capstone is, is available in 40 countries around the world. Students are actually having their research published in academic journals. So that's, that's the level of work students are, are able to do. Um, some of the benefits, it's, it's a growing program, but it's something that makes students stand out as they're applying to colleges, showing that they've been doing this kind of work. Um, if they're really interested in a field of study, when they do AP research, they can already show that they have interest in certain fields that they might apply to. They might apply this to. And colleges like the program. Um, these are some of the universities in the early years that were recognizing the importance of the AP Capstone program. And Ms. Varnon does AP research and I do AP seminar and the students go through this two-year program and, and near the end of the year we have had kids do some brainstorming together or, or presenting what topics they ended up doing their research on and, and we get to know the students really well. And Ms. Varnon can't be here today, so all right, I'm done for now. I'll be back. All right. So who's going to go next? Yeah, that's, she's here. Did you want to speak to computer science? Yeah. So, um, AP Computer Science uh, next year will be offered a virtual high school uh, style. Um, we're changing around our programming uh, here for computer science, but I do encourage uh, students to take the AP Computer Science Principles course. Uh, it's a really uh, diverse course that includes you know, broad ideas of computer science, not a specific language. So it kind of opens a lot of doors to uh, paths in computer science. The APA course is specifically Java, and it's, you know, uh, comp uh, completed with a Java uh, exam at the end. Uh, while the AP computer science principles includes a project uh, program, uh, an app or whatever, uh, they design and um, and also a written exam. So there's two parts to that. So um, well, it will be offered online. Uh, I will uh, support any student who wants to find out more about it. Um, and um, the AP Computer Science Principles is also going to be part of our new Pathways program. Thank you. So we're going to be going in alphabetical order um, following basically our, our department. So we're going to be uh, asking uh, our, one of our English teachers, Melissa Strelke, to come up now. Um, our other English teacher, Lynette Varnon, could not be here, but Melissa is going to speak to both courses that are offered uh, in English. So thank you, Melissa. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Melissa Strelke. I'm the English teacher.
the world and how we're in communication with the world as well. And so the course goals are um, first developing uh, critical literacy, thinking about um, deeply reading and, and writing and thinking about the art of language and how that's fostered in how we're communicating um, in largely nonfiction texts. This course centers more on nonfiction, um, thinking about speeches, thinking about how we kind of argue in a sense and what that means, um, and facilitating an informed citizenship. So there's a lot of kind of discussion about polarization in the United States today. And this class is looking at how do we um, engage in dialogue and conversation in ways where we can actually hear each other's opinion and we can have civil conversations around these topics and um, hear each other's perspectives and kind of come to new understandings through um, really thinking about not only things that like affirm our own views but to seek other counterpoints and other perspectives as well. Um, so these are some of the texts that we um, examine throughout the class. We kind of start with Just Mercy over the summer. We then dive into Think Again, which kind of challenges us to think about the way we uh, communicate and um, see each other's perspectives. We think about the language of internet and media um, and advertising. We think about the uh, way in which uh, words um, can have different connotations that develop over time. And then of course, we gotta get into satire as well. And thinking about um, uh, students write kind of their own modest proposals in a sense. So looking at the way in which you can have a lot of fun with rhetoric too. Um, and continuing to examine the way in which language evolves over time. And so really what it gets down to is we're examining and participating in the art of language um, and thinking about how that plays out in our personal lives and our day-to-day -day interactions and our interactions in the hallway, our interactions with family members, um, and how that interacts with all the other classes that students are taking. So many students have um, come back from colleges saying that um, they've used this course a lot um, in their different studies, and this is coming from science majors, math majors, social studies majors. So it kind of spans. Um, it also can um, function if students score high enough score in um, the AP exam. It can uh, serve in place of your freshman year uh, writing class that most colleges require, so we can kind of save time and money there. Um, and uh, oops. Okay. And also, I need to talk to you about the AP Lit course as well. Um, so Miss Vernon isn't here today. Um, but Ms. Vernon teaches AP literature. And so AP Lang uh, is a focus on nonfiction, and AP literature is a focus more on fiction. Um, and so it uh, focuses on reading, writing, analyzing about imaginative literature from various periods. They engage in close reading and critical analysis. Of imaginative, of imaginative literature to deepen their understanding of the ways writers use language to provide both meaning and pleasure. As they read, students consider a work's structure, style, and themes, as well as its, as its use of figurative language, imagery, and symbolism. Writing assignments include expository, analytical, and argumentative essays that require students to analyze and interpret literary works. Um, all right, in a world where we find ourselves increasingly surrounded by and immersed in technology and media overload, we can reunite ourselves with our human sides when we dedicate time to reading and analyzing literature that, that both reflected 
and shaped our humanness for centuries. Words are some of the most powerful tools we have, and that's some wisdom from uh, Lynette Vernon, who teaches that course. And both of these courses are open to uh, juniors and seniors. Hi, I'm Steve Leiter. I'm chair of the math department. I'm going to stand in the middle of the room and cheer people in the back uh, in here. Uh, so we have two AP courses in math. I'll give you the department view, and then I'll talk about my course. Um, we have AP statistics and AP calculus. And uh, typically, uh, we have many students who just take one of the AP maths or the other. Uh, but every year, we have eight to 10 that take both the AP calculus And so the typical progression, uh, I'd say more than 95% of the time, is that juniors would take AP Calc and seniors would take AP Stats. Uh, and there are exceptions. Um, and we, are, we accommodate students, but typically is how that happens. Uh, let me tell you about my course. Uh, it's kind of fitting that I'm heading right after English. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of writing in uh, statistics. The basic units are uh, uni one variable data. We look at the bell curve. Um, we look at um, how to collect data and uh, conduct experiments and surveys, uh, probability and stats, and then the whole second semester is statistical inference. And this is really where the real world is just uh, out there for our use. Um, I would say I've shown the movie. Anyone see the movie and the band played on? Uh, it is about the AIDS crisis epidemic. Um, and for so I've taught the course for 21 years. I've um, been a grader for the College Board for four, so I help grade the exams. Uh, I would say for the past 20 years, I've been able to use the AIDS epidemic as um, it's a real life example of statistical inference. Uh, so it was really when hemophiliac started coming down with AIDS that they zeroed in on the blood supply. But before they were willing to do anything, um, the people in control of the blood supply said, oh sure, uh, you have a higher rate of incidence with hemophiliacs in the general public, but is that enough of a difference to say is significant, that we need to do something, we need to change things. Um, and how do you make that determination? Um, so that's really where the writing comes in and making conclusions. Uh, of course, now we have uh, COVID, um, which has been, um, you know, we're all dealing with it, but it truly has been a bonanza for statistics. What is a randomized double-blind study? That's in the news. Um, I even volunteered to be in the pilot program, but I got rejected. <laughs> oh well. Um, and then, okay, so people with the vaccine are uh, developing the disease at a much lower rate than the general public. How much different does that rate need to be for the FDA to say we approve? Uh, so these are some of the things uh, we deal with in statistical inference. And the writing is huge. Um, I can help your student become a better writer, uh, but they need a certain level of writing skills uh, coming into the course. Um, I would say on a par with the need for math skills. Uh, so that's what my course is all about. And I'll now turn it over to Mrs. Johnson, who teaches calculus. Everybody. I am Kate Johnson. I teach AP Calculus here at Frontier. Um, the College Board offers two different versions of AP Calculus. One is AB and the other is BC. At Frontier we offer the AB version. So if you were going to compare it to like your college level calculus, it's all the way through Calculus 1, which is your differential calculus, and about halfway through Calc 2. 
So we get into integrals, we get into applications of integrals, we stop short of series, sequences, convergence, Taylor polynomials. So like students will feel if they go straight to calc two when they hit that, oh, this is new moment. Um, and it's about halfway through calc two. Um, it's the mathier of the math AP courses. Uh, we don't need as much of the foundation of writing, but we definitely need to have a strong foundation of math. So these are typically your students who took Algebra one in ninth grade, or maybe not, honors geometry. 10th grade, they went through honors algebra two and honors pre-calculus. And Mr. Blinder's correct, it's usually mostly 11th graders in AP calculus. But that's only because we want you to take it when pre-calculus is fresh. If you ended up on a different track, transferred to us, scheduling conflicts, and you take pre-calculus in 11th grade, sign up for AP calculus as a senior. I get seniors every year. Usually only a couple, but it's fine. Um, so we start at the beginning. We don't do a lot of review of prerequisites because you have pre-calculus and algebra two. We start with limits. What's a derivative? What are all my rules? What are all my applications? And then integrals and some really cool applications to those as well. Um, I like the course a lot. I've taught it here for seven years and a few years before I came to Frontier as well. Students tend to like it, but it's pretty intense. It's every day and it's all year. So it ties up your schedule a little bit more so than some of the every other day semester courses. There is an honors calculus if you want to take calculus but you can't fit AP, that's fine too. Um, I'll be in the back with all the other teachers after presentation, so pop by, ask me questions, peek at the syllabus, whatever you like. And it looks like we've got science coming next. Stacy. Good evening, and it, it's great seeing so many people coming out. Um, I'm Stacy Chapley. I'm the AP Biology teacher. Currently, we are running AP Biology. It runs every other year. So those of you that are freshmen or sophomores, freshmen, it will be available in your junior year. If you're a sophomore, it will be available again when you're a senior. So we're running again in the fall of 2023. As with our sciences, they run every other year. So coming up next fall is going to be AP Environmental Science and AP Chemistry. And running concurrently with AP Biology is AP Physics at this time. <clears throat> Can you hear me back there? OK. So AP Biology runs off of four big ideas, one being the process of evolution drives the diversity and unity of life. So we look at how things have progressed, how things have stayed the same, both in the smallest of organisms to the largest of organisms. Uh, our second big idea is biological systems utilize free energy and molecular building blocks to grow, reproduce, and maintain dynamic homeostasis so we see this not only at the macroscopic level, but we also see it at the microscopic level. Our third big idea is li living systems store, retrieve, transmit, and respond to information essential to life processes. This is when we do a, dig, uh, a deep dive into cell communication. We look at um, DNA replication, we look at how DNA eventually is the blueprint and ends up making the proteins that make us who we are, what we do, what color our skins are, what color the fur of our dogs are, and so on. And then the fourth one is how systems interact. Um, and their interactions possess complex properties. So looking at not only um, organisms such as animals, we're also looking at the plants. We're looking at it at the microscopic level with the motor proton moving a vesicle through the cell all the way up to our jaguar up over there. So expectations, this is a hard class. You're almost learning a foreign language. There's a lot of new vocabulary that go along with it. 
So it's both hard and I think it's fun. And how can biology not be? Because we are biology. You are living, breathing science. So there is that expectation. We're running at a college level course. And just like college, um, freshmen taking that introductory bi um, biology, there are expectations. My parents, what my parents and my students is to support your student by not stressing the grades. Okay? This is a course that dives deep. They're going to have great days. They're not going to have such great days. Okay? Don't stress the grades. Stress the, the, um, the growth in their knowledge and the skills that they are developing as they go through the course to be better lifelong learners. So what I tend to do is um, you can expect about an hour, hour and a half homework every night. That involves textbook con um, content reading, um, watching videos that go along that content, and then they come into the classroom and it's an active classroom. So it's not me standing up lecturing the content to them. It's actually allowing them to start using manipulatives, um, talking with each other, and working through some of these big ideas. The proteins fuse together in the membrane, so it transfers. So this is where we do um, drawing, and then the kids have to go through and explain what they were drawing. We're looking at the cell membrane and how um, molecules are moved through the cell membrane. So this really gets them thinking and communicating, and when they're communicating and teaching others what they have done, it actually deepens that knowledge. Another, whoops. There we go. All right, another one is going to be acting out um, processes. So this is a cell communication skit. Uh, so here we're, we're, we're looking at how different molecules are signaling through the cell in order to be able um, to get the cell to do what we want it to do. Oh, come on. All right. The other one um, we'll, we'll, they'll work on is also creating um, stop motion videos and they'll be working through this. So as they're working through their DNA replication process, they have a list of items that they need to make sure that they include. So now they also have a study material to help them realize and soak in that type of process. All right, so with AP Biology, as I have here, we do a lot of active learning, drawing, building, and dis discussing concepts. Work with them on taking um, notes, which looks a lot different, especially in the sciences. Practice the critical thinking, asking questions to investigate. They will design their own labs. They'll report back out. Um, building the science skills necessary to move forward and their hard work is going to pay off. They're going to take off. So if you have any questions, I'll be back there. Feel free to stop by. I have a couple experiments um, that we've recently done. You can take a look. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, Zach, you're up. Let's do this. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Zach Rahm. I am the AP Chemistry teacher here at Frontier. Uh, AP Chemistry is a course that students can start taking usually in 11th and 12th grade. Uh, they need to have a passing grade in general chemistry before they can take it, and they usually take that around 10th grade. Um, AP Chemistry is a course where we do sort of a deeper dive into chemistry. So we take what we learned in general chemistry and we go a little bit deeper with the material. And we also expand upon it, and we do some uh, units that we don't do in general chemistry. 
things like equilibrium, and we look further into acids and bases, and do a little bit of electrochemistry right at the end. Um, it is a challenging course. It's definitely a step up from the general chemistry. Uh, we do a lot of more mathematical analysis in AP Chem, so it is strongly recommended that students have at least a comfort level with math. You don't have to have you know, AP Calc under your belt for it, but you should be very comfortable with doing things like rearranging equations and um, have a general comfort with algebra at the very least. Uh, what we do in the course, we study matter and its interactions. So we look at things like atoms and molecules and try to figure out how the structure of things on the small scale affects the properties on the large scale. We also do a bunch of cool hands-on investigations. And so we try to answer questions like, um, how much copper is in a brass fitting? Or how acidic are fruit drinks and soft drinks? And we use a lot of chemistry and a lot of math to try to figure those things out. Um, it is definitely a challenging course. Like all AP courses, it is college level. That means there's homework on most nights, um, a lot of reading, some homework. Uh, I try not to overload students with homework, but there will be stuff every single night for them to do. Um, there's also a, um, there's a lot of material in the course. So we have to do, have to keep up a pace in the course and kind of keep it upbeat uh, in order to get through all of the material that we have there. Well, that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more, I have a little thing set up in the back. I also have, from our AP environmental science teacher, a little blurb. He was unable to make it tonight, so I will read through um, just a little overview of what AP environmental science is. Um, like Stacy was saying, AP environmental uh, and AP Chem run opposite AP Physics and AP Bio. So Bio and Physics are running this year, Chem and Environmental are running next year. So if you're looking to sign up for courses for next year, for Sciences, that will be Environmental and Chem. So here is the Environmental course. Our uh, instructor is uh, Justin Cheney for this. And he writes here, this class will engage in an in-depth exploration of how humans interact with all the Earth's systems and the impacts and effects of our actions have on those systems and the Earth as a whole. Students cultivate their understanding of the interrelationships of the natural world through inquiry-based lab activities and field work as they explore concepts like the four big ideas. Energy transfer, interactions between Earth systems, interactions between different species and the environment, and sustainability. While the class is science-based, we will also discuss issues of economics, equity, social and environmental justice, as the subject is truly interdisciplinary and nothing on our planet exists in a vacuum. As an AP course, the class will move at a fast pace and require students to be motivated and engaged in course content. You may still be in high school, but this is a college level course. Um, there are a few other pieces of information on here. He does have a few of these printed out for you to take with you, so there are a few back here. Uh, prerequisites for the class, passing grades in biology and general chemistry are the prereqs. But if you are currently taking those classes, that is acceptable as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Hello, my name is Levi Owens. I'm running the uh, AP Physics course here. Um, uh, as was said earlier, uh, this is running this year, um, so it won't be available uh, next year, but the year after that. Um, and as appropriate as this rocket is for my presentation, I'm just going to... Yeah. There we go. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, we offer uh, AP Physics 1. Um, it is an algebra-based physics class uh, dealing primarily with motion. Uh, we don't get into electromagnetics or uh, modern physics or anything like that. We just uh, focus primarily on the science of motion. We start off with uh, st standard kinematics, velocity, acceleration, and we look at um, the relationship between them and their representations using math. Um, and while physics is a very math-heavy course, um, this is not a course that requires um, calculus. Uh, but we are, we are investigating these properties through mathematical processes. Um, it is a very uh, lab-focused uh, course, and um, I would say probably like two-thirds of our time is spent just kind of investigating these, these uh, situations, running labs, and seeing what happens, uh, um, comparing uh, different um, happenings. Um, 
So, um, yeah, uh, let's see here. We, uh, we run through the kinematics. We've got, um, we're, we're working on um, collisions at the moment. Uh, we've got a bunch of interesting uh, apparatus to, uh, fun apparatus to kind of investigate these um, phenomena. And yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun and interesting course. Hi, everybody. Can you all hear me? I'll just talk really loud. My name's Laura Moore. Uh, thank you for being here. I teach AP Government and Politics. And uh, for me personally, I think this is the one of the most exciting and interesting times to be teaching AP Government and Politics. Uh, the course is, uh, runs every day the first semester, and the second semester is every other day. And of course, is the AP exam in May. Um, so basically, we cover, there are five themes. The first one, the first unit would be the foundations of government, you know, how our government was created, the Constitution. Um, basically, the whole course is surround, the Constitution is the, is, is the foundation. So everything we talk about stems from the Constitution. Then we talk about the branches of government, we talk about civil rights and civil liberties. We also talk about public opinion and mass media, which is really fascinating, and polling. And actually, it ties in a little bit to statistics as well, because that's, we use a lot of charts and graphs to understand human behavior and how uh, people react to certain uh, questions when polled. And I think it's been especially interesting after the 2016 election, how everybody thought certain things would happen, then they didn't. Like, oh my goodness, how did this happen? The polls were wrong. Ah. Anyway, so we studied that kind of thing, which I find really fascinating. And then the fifth theme is mostly like political ideology and socialization. How do we, uh, how do we get politicized? How do we learn um, uh, what our ideology might be? Uh, you know, obviously we learn from families, from you know, our friends, and, and as students get older, they develop their own ideology. So those are basically the five thing, themes. Um, more importantly though, for me especially now, is to help students um, to promote sorry about the mask here, <laughs> develop cit citizenship skills, critical thinking skills. There's a lot of reading and writing, like others have said, every day. Uh, current events is obviously uh, <laughs> something we would talk about all the time. E, uh, let's see, what else? Um, critical thinking skills, oh, learning how to discuss and debate issues in a civil fashion. I think that's really necessary these days. <laughs> Uh, I spend a lot of time focusing on um, the strengths and weaknesses of our political system. There's been a lot of change. There's been a lot of chaos in the country. Um, so we also study history and other times when we've been in similar situations. Also, we talk a lot about um, rights and responsibilities as citizens. Um, I talk to students a lot about voting. Uh, let's see. And if they're not registered to vote, I can help them register to vote. Let's see, uh, what else? Yeah, we do a lot of discussion. We do a lot of argument-based writing, and other courses do the same kind of thing. You present an argument, a, a, a position, and then you defend it using evidence and factual information. I've spent a lot of time the last year, well, the last couple years, helping students uh, sift through uh, what's real and what's not real, um, and it can be really tricky. Anyway, so I've been spending more time with that. And also one of the best things, the best things about the classes, and it hasn't happened in three years, is we go to Washington, D.C. Ms. Walters and I will take students, we'll take AP Gov students, and she takes an AP class. And we'll spend four days in Washington, D.C. And to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a member of Congress, their member of Congress, it's just the best part of the whole year, really. And uh, this year, we were going to go, and I had to cancel it just obvious reasons and it was too difficult anyway. The Capitol is not open. Members of Congress couldn't meet with us. So hopefully next year we'll get to do that. Um, oh, I didn't mention it's a 12th grade class. So um, the DC trip is really a lot of fun. But they should take it also because they'll learn a lot. They'll lot, learn a lot about their government, um, about each other, and uh, they'll learn how to think critically and really um, pay attention to the news, I think, in a different way. So. 
That's it. If you have any questions, I'll be back there afterwards as well. Thank you. Hi, folks. Um, I'm Charlie Tebitz. I teach uh, AP U.S. History. This is the first year we've offered this. Uh, AP U.S. History is a introductory survey course at a freshman level in college offered to 10th graders. So th that's a challenge for a lot of 10th graders to take that on. Uh, the course is basically organized in eight sections. And the, uh, the earliest section, if you will, you know, you can go back to Ice Age and uh, Land Bridge, et cetera, et cetera, up to Colonial Period. And the last section, which would be the present, so, you know, recent elections, et cetera, they tend to be less emphasized in the, uh, in the course because the exam uh, for the course concentrates on the four, excuse me, six uh, core sections of the course. Uh, between those two bookended uh, epics, earliest time and more recent time. Um, uh, the course uh, requires an enormous amount of reading that uh, also is used to weave together a huge amount of material that the student needs to master. And um, that's been lots of fun with the students who have habitually been uh, you know, very strong students uh, and we've done these practiced exams that mimic the ultimate exam that they're going to have to do, and they find that, um, that, uh, that the, 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 the depth of the reading that they need to do and the ability to connect and inter interconnect and weave together all sorts of bits of historical information is um, you know, very rewarding, but very challenging, too. Uh, but uh, we've had a huge amount of growth uh, so far through the course. I'm sure that any, uh, any of your young people could take that on successfully if they were really committed to doing the reading for the class. And uh, I, too, will be in the rear. I have a syllabi, basically shows you how the course is broken down. It is a whole year course that meets every other day. So your child will effectively be with me an entire semester, but it's spread out through the, of the whole year. Uh, then that way they'll be able to interweave other courses that are offered uh, every other day as well. So, yeah, please come and see me over there. If you can't, um, email me anytime. I'm more than happy to email you back to uh, set up a phone date to talk on the phone. Or if you want to even chat in person, I'd be happy to do that too. Just let me know. Thank you. Hi again, I'm back. Um, I'm the last one. Everybody is finished, now I'm the last one. And I will, um, so I'm Allison Walters. I'm the social studies department head as well as teacher of three different AP classes. Um, the two that I'm gonna talk about now which are not AP seminar are AP Human Geography and our new AP World class which is replacing AP European History which I've taught for the past 10 years. AP Human Geography is the one AP class that is open to everybody in high school. It's open to ninth graders through 12th graders. It's the type of class that if somebody just wants to dip their toe into college level work and still be able to have a fun experience understanding how humans interact with the world. Um, it's, it's a class to do it. It's every other day and it's year long. Um, this is the second year I've had ninth graders. I've got seven now. I had four ninth graders in the class last year, but I have nine through 12th grade in that class and they all work together really well. What we look at in that class is um, like, how do we look at our planet? Um, how and why did we move to where we are? How do we have so many different languages? Why did religions start where they did? What is a culture? Where does our food come from? How has industrialization changed our planet and urbanization? And then what is globalization? And it's, much, it's, it's, a, it's a course that really takes a look at how we as human beings live here, interact, and create our environment. 
The other class, and, and it's, a, it's an elective class that can, again, be taken by anyone who's 9 through 12. The other class that's going to be new next year is AP World History, modern, which is 1200 to the present day. The AP History classes really talk a lot and teach a lot about critical thinking, reading, and writing, and discussions. A lot of discussions, forming questions and being engaged with each other. It's the equivalent of a survey world, modern world history class. In 11th grade, one of the required, like the required class for social studies is modern world history. AP world history can be taken instead of that because we do not offer an honors level for 10th grade US, 11th grade world history two, or government. What we do is we offer an AP class for each of those courses. So we have AP US, which is a higher level class. We have AP World, which is a higher level class than regular modern world history. And then we have AP Government, which can be taken and replace the required classes that the students have to take for graduation. Now, AP World is based on a series of themes. And I just want to read the themes. And because I'm still in the process of, of planning the class, the themes include humans and the environment, cultural developments and interactions, governance, the development of different types of governments, economic systems, social interactions and organizations, and then technology and innovation. And it's worldwide. Um, it's mainly geared towards 11th graders, but it's going to be open to 11th and 12th graders who, who maybe need to be working around their schedules if they wanted to do AP government and they couldn't fit into a senior and they could do, they could switch these two classes around if they needed to. And I will be in the back with a big table with lots of stuff for AP Seminar, Human Geography, and AP World. And thank you very much. So thank you once again for coming. So now's the time for you to, uh, if you have any questions for the teachers, if you want to see the materials, please feel free. They've set up tables in the back. Thank you once again for coming, and uh, have a good evening. This is just um, one of our, so we did bacterial transformation, so we took the genes from a red uh, sea anemone and put it into bacteria so that the bacteria is now glowing it's that pinky red color. So we just finished that last week. Oh, Elizabeth, how are you? That, okay. Are you, that we, are you uh, enforcing this? One of the many, many labs. So I didn't say if you are doing this. So we do a lot. We do a lot of a lot of labs. There you go. And would you like a syllabus? You'll eventually get one if you decide to take the course, but I'll give you one anyway. That's for those things. Uh, these are our fun little carts. We can uh, play with uh, collisions. Oh, yeah. They're fairly frictionless. Real time data collection. <laughs> cool. <laughs>
inquisitive and very caring, bright kid. Yeah. Very uh, kind. Yeah. And um, I think he would yeah. really benefit from a more structured AP type experience. Yep. Because that's what helps him when he yep. feels like he has to step up yep. rather yep. than just hang out. Yep. Yes. So, no, did you research again? Lynette Barnum. Um, okay. Yep. So they're kind of connected. They're like yes. two steps. Yes. I'm really impressed. I'm just kidding. I teach people. What you need to be thinking about this year as freshmen is you need to be thinking about arguments, how you can parse them, and how. I, I really wouldn't, but then if you swap for like nets, you know, you'll get some background. Yeah, because I'd be in a Especially because we have like a whole unit on.